Welcome to Shorty Supercoach. You're probably watching this four days after I've had the old COVID test, but it does feel like it's that long right now. It's a bit of a drag, it's a bit of a line, but uh, if you're not up to date, uh, Shorty's going up to Brisbane, so I had to get the little test just to jump on the plane. Um, so yeah, we're getting there. It's actually probably moving a little bit quicker than I had thought. Um, so yeah, I'm scheduling a few videos just so there's a bit of content rolling, so I thought, well, I'm going to be bored out of my brain, so let's put the cricket on and let's uh, do a few videos. So, doing a couple of videos just before the start of play and, and hopefully then can listen to the Aussies roll through the rest of the palms today and um, probably just chase down a small little total. So, um, there's been some exciting moments, which is cool. But um, look, I wanted to do a bit of a different video today. I've been doing a few club-by-club -club previews, as you would have seen. Um, but just a little sort of different one, a little historical look at Supercoach and something a little bit quirky. Uh, I just was Googling the other day for whatever reason. I think I was looking up um, Gary Ablett's 250 or whatever it was when he scored that massive score and, and just found a page that had all the Supercoach scores of 200 or more. And I thought, well, that's interesting. And there were more than I thought. So I thought, well, I wonder if people out there might be a little bit interested just to yeah, have a, a broad chat about you know, some random blokes that had scored 200, some of the highest scores we've ever seen, and and just a few things that stood out to me when I had a look. So it was quite interesting, I must admit. Now, um, there were some names that I thought, what? when did he score 200? I never would have thought. And um, I wonder if the scoring system just allocates points slightly different. People might know it. It seems like in the early stages when this was more recorded around 2005, 2006, there seemed to be a few more. So... Like I said, that 254 that I was at, Gary Ablett, against Sydney, dominant. He had huge touches. I think he might have kicked three in the last quarter, and he just went enormous. I remember the Channel 10 commentary, you know, because back in the day, Supercoach wasn't something that was as well known. It didn't have an article. It didn't have all this uh, media coverage in the paper and the internet and, and all that sort of stuff. And I remember the commentator said, now, if you do... Uh, Super coach, he's just passed 230 super coach, but you know, it was like a foreign language where now it'd be um, probably spruiked all over social media before anyone even um, had a chance to wonder what was going on. But 254, and the funny thing on that day was I had Gary as my captain, and that was before loopholes or anything. Bang, skipper on Gary, awesome. He scored me over 500 points as my captain. It was also the worst week I think I've ever had in Supercoach. Not from an absolute stats point of view, but from the disappointment. I didn't score 2,000. That's not a word of a lie. I think I scored... I think it was 1960 or something like that. Because I remember thinking, shit, I'm going to have a massive week. And not everyone had Ablett as skipper. This was when like he was a superstar, but it wasn't like he was that goat lock for captain every single week. He was. He would have been popular, but... I remember just, I remember doing the maths, I think Ablett scored 500 points, I think the rest of my team averaged somewhere in the high 70s or something like that, you can probably work it out yourself, but I couldn't believe it, 500 points from one bloke, and then I didn't even crack 2,000, embarrassing stuff, but that wasn't even the highest score of all time, Jonathan Brown has that, 8 goals, 4, 16 marks, 25 touches, 262 for Big Jono. Pretty amazing score there, and there were, I didn't count it all up, but I reckon there was, oh, 25 or so blokes who had scored 200 before. Not too many above, like, 230. There were quite a few in the low 200s, but um, some random ones. Josh Drummond, 227, had 25 kicks. He was an unbelievable super coach prospect. I remember one game, and you might remember if you used to do it a long time ago, he had about 11 touches and scored like 96. Unbelievable efficiency. I don't know how he did it, but just a beautiful left boot. Used to kick goals, used to take the kick outs and just hit targets like they were going out of fashion. Lindsay Thomas, seven goals, five for a 217 super coach. And you know, for all the Lindsay haters out there, he actually laid eight tackles that day as well. So it wasn't just the goals. I remember looking at this one, going through the paper. Every, every Monday I used to go through the paper, the Herald Sun used to have the scores. Corey Jones, 201, kicked the seven goals. I thought, Jesus Christ, that's a random bloke to score 200. 
Timmy English, I reckon this one will age pretty amusingly. I'm not saying he's going to have a poor career. I, I'm quite a fan of Tim English, as you would know. But his 204, gee, that was one out of the box. And Heath Shaw, 203. I had him in my team that day. Kick after kick after kick. 36 kicks. Honest to God, he just kept being on the end of every switch, hitting targets. I think 34 were effective. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um... And some other interesting things, you know, Gary Ablett Jr. has the most double tons. Four of those. And Barry Hall, big bad bustling Barry, has double tonned three times with some massive, massive goal tallies. Now, what, like looking through it, what sort of makes a 200 score? You know, it, it's clearly some enormous touches, but more often than not, it's goals. You know, more often than not, it was big hauls of goals or midfielders that had massive days but also kick three. So um, there were some exceptions where big games, of course, with the possessions and double-figure tackles. Jimmy Bartel had that. Josh Dunkley had that. Um, and there were a couple of other interesting ones. Daniel Kerr. I found this quite interesting. Round 1, 2007. Had 28 touches, 7 tackles, 225 super coach. Must have been mighty... Um, Mighty effective. I'm pretty sure he didn't even kick a goal. He had eight frees, four. So that's quite interesting. But um, 28 touches, didn't even crack the 30. A few tackles, but 225. Must have just cut him to ribbons, uh, Daniel Kerr. And Todd Goldstein, I think a few of us have remember this one. 221, 56 hitouts versus the Bombers. And there was a Max Gorm one as well, I think, where they just... You could almost see it coming. Not a 200, but, you know, you could sense that they're up against a no-name ruck. And boy, they went bang a couple of times. I think a few of us cashed in on that. And Richo, Matthew Richardson, had 19 marks, kicked 9 for 247 Supercoach points in 2006. But So there's a little trip down memory lane, a few stats and figures from way back when. But is there a 200 that stands out for you? Is there someone that you sort of think, Jesus, did they score 200? I remember I traded in Cornelio a couple of years back. And he came out and scored 207. Bryce Gibbs has a double ton to his name. But, you know, you, you, I know Chris Judd had one, but I actually thought he might have had more. Um, Warren Treadray had a couple. Yeah, so it was quite interesting. Um, if there's a couple that stand out for you, feel free to let me know. And uh, if you've got a guess at the who's going to score a 200 this year, let me know what you reckon. But uh, I think I found that site. It might have been Footy Wire. Just, just Google... Super coach scores of 200, it'll pop up. But um, it made for some interesting viewing and a bit of a trip down memory lane. And um, yeah, I thought it might be of interest. So I'll be back soon. Who am I doing next? I think it might be Richmond. So North Melbourne. Got North Melbourne next. So we'll take a look at those guys shortly. Cheers.